Hey there, today I'm excited to show you how I made this 3D printed weapon. But it's not just any weapon. This marks my very first attempt at creating a cosplay sword, and it gets even better. This sword comes from Genshin Impact, a game that's become a family favorite. You see, we go to Dragon Con every year, so the whole family decided to step into the shoes of characters from Genshin Impact. Our youngest chose to cosplay as Chi Chi. For those who don't know, Chi Chi is a sword wielding zombie girl. We needed a sword that was easy to print, could be scaled down for little hands, and most importantly, be sturdy. After exploring various options, I picked this design on Thingiverse. It's the Cinnabar Spindle. Its design was perfect for scaling down, plus I really appreciated the wooden rod for support. With the intros out of the way, let's get printing. This print consists of 13 main parts, with some pegs used to help guide the pieces together. I printed this on a lower setting to help speed things up. In hindsight, I should have printed it at a higher quality that would have reduced the time spent sanding. Now that we have all the necessary parts printed, it's time to dive into my favorite part of 3D printing. The cleanup. Said no one ever. Although, I gotta admit, there's just something satisfying about the crisp crackling sound of removing the supports. I went with tree supports, which use much less filament. They're not only easier to remove, but also typically leave a smoother finish on the print. I generally try to remove these supports by hand when I can. And once the bigger pieces are removed, I'll go ahead and use needle nose pliers or clippers to remove the stubborn parts. You'll see that I used a brim for many of the parts. It helps them stick to the bed, which is particularly useful, especially for the taller parts. The only downside to using brims is that they leave behind extra filament on the edges, which then needs to be cleaned up. Do you have any tips or tricks for removing supports from a 3D print? Do you have a favorite tool you use? If you do, share in the comments below. Here, I have to get my trusty needle nose. I'm not exactly sure what these are called. They go between the handguard and the handle, and you can see the channel where the wooden rod sits. I always try to minimize the waste generated with 3D printing. It's a shame you can't easily recycle this stuff. What do you do with your wasted trimmings? Imperfections like these are just part of 3D printing. Once you primer and sand, you'll hardly notice. If only I could sand this fast in real life. Sanding might not be so bad. These little parts are really important for our build. They help make sure that the blades line up just right. It always makes me nervous whenever I have to use this glue, because if you don't place the parts together fast enough or just right, you could potentially ruin the parts. And in some cases, you'll need to print them all over again. I always appreciate designs that incorporate these alignment pins. They make assembly that much easier, especially when you're gluing in place. Occasionally, these pins might be a bit snug, and you might have to sand them down a bit for an ideal fit. However, in my situation, a soft tap with a rubber mallet did the trick. We're almost finished with the main section of the sword. Once we're done applying the glue, we'll need to quickly assemble the pieces before the glue sets in. And there you have it, the base of the sword complete. Here's what I refer to as the crest. It's unique in this build because it's the only component that needs its two halves glued together. Here's some extra filament where the wooden rod goes, so I'll need to trim that out with some snippers and then use a deburr tool to smooth out the edges. You'll notice that there are no guide pins for this piece, and that's unfortunate because it was a little tricky to align these parts. Now we're onto the gluing stage. I'm using Gorilla Glue, which always gets me a bit anxious since it sets so quickly. As I place the pieces in the vise, I need to work fast to get them aligned correctly. The vise can be tricky. Tighten it too much and you lose the ability to adjust it. If it's too loose, the pieces might slip, but with some careful adjustments, everything aligns perfectly. If this were my design, I would definitely redesign this so there was guide pins for this part. Luckily, I was able to get this on the first try, 
Now we just let it dry. Here we have one set of the hand guards. And as you can see, there is a square peg that helps guide these two pieces together. But because of the extra filament from the brim, it doesn't quite fit. So we're going to have to sand this part off. You could either hold it with your fingers and sand it, or you could use needle nose pliers and sand it that way as well. With a little light sanding, you should find that these pieces fit together nicely. Now it's time for the glue. Thankfully, this time, we do have a guide to help put the two pieces together. And just like that, we're done with this half of the hand guards. There's still one more set to do. Let's check out the components that will soon form the hand guard. We have three parts here, the left and the right sides, along with the center piece that will help bring everything together. When assembling the hand guard, it's important to leave some space for the glue. Now after applying the glue, you can press the pieces together into their final position. Here's the final section of the hilt that needs to be assembled. I believe this is the pummel. Now this part would have benefited from having guide pins. Thankfully I had this vise to help me hold the pieces together. And just to ensure that the parts were aligned correctly, I inserted the wooden dowel rod into the hole to make sure that the parts were aligned. At this point in the build, we've put together the main components of the blade. This includes the hilt, the crest, as I like to call it, the handguard, the blade tip, and the blade itself. At this point, my excitement was building as I could see all the parts finally coming together and shaping up into my first cosplay sword. This next step is going to help me figure out what size length I need for the dowel rod. So I'll start by clamping down the hilt. I'm using a 5 16th inch rod that I got from Home Depot. And apparently it comes with a warning label. Oh, California. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I've got several more cosplay weapons lined up for future prints. And if there's enough interest, I'll definitely make more content like this. Or if you have any other video ideas or things you would like me to 3D print, leave them in the comments below. I can't overestimate how much I really love this dowel rod design. Not only does it help me place all the parts together, but it really gives a sword a solid feel. Now that everything's together, I could eye up how long this dowel rod needs to be and trim off the excess. Now that we got the dowel rod the perfect size we need, we can put everything together. Are there any Genshin Impact fans watching? Our adventure with this game began because we're huge fans of Breath of the Wild. I often heard people call Genshin Impact a ripoff, but after playing it, I feel it's more heavily inspired by it, and it even excels in some aspects. As a family, we started playing together, and it swiftly turned into one of our favorite activities. We love the game so much that now, here I am crafting cosplay weapons for the family. You might be curious about what I'm coating the wooden rod with. It's called Goop. But don't worry, unlike the Goop brand, this one doesn't come with lifestyle tips. If you know, you know. But I digress. I prefer this glue for its thick, rubbery consistency. It makes it super easy to work with. You can see that the wooden rod sits a bit loose in the central supporting shaft, so I needed something that could fill in the gaps and hold it steady, but also allowing you plenty of adjustment before the glue completely sets. This handguard assembly is the perfect use case for this type of glue. You can see there's a bit of wiggle room here. Okay, it's more than just a bit, but I'll have to apply some goop to the rod and then crazy glue the handguards here and here. I believe the handguard assembly will really demonstrate the effectiveness of this glue. You noticed how much wiggle room there was earlier, but once I applied some of this goop, that wiggle disappears letting me position the parts securely and accurately. We just need to add a little bit more goop here, 
so we can place the last piece of the handguard. And we'll switch over to Crazy Glue to adhere these two parts of the handguard. Now we just let that dry for a little bit before we start putting together the handle. Nothing new here. More goo and assemble the handle. Now that everything's assembled, it's time for the prep work. One lesson I learned the hard way and won't be repeating again is to make sure that you print in high quality. It's going to save you a lot of time in prep work. Speaking of prep work, I used this plastic wood filler. This stuff is fantastic for smoothing out those little gaps and imperfections. It's easy to work with, sands down easily, and it's a must if you want to have that smooth finish. This step is crucial before applying the primer. It'll make sure you have a uniform surface after sanding away the excess. Primer can only cover so much. For the larger gaps, you'll want to use filler. I've used this now on several projects. I like it because it goes on pink and then it dries brown, letting me know that it's ready to be sanded. This is an unfortunate part of these builds, the sanding. There will be lots of this. I really wish I could sand this fast in real life. The bad part about using putty is that it could cover up some of the intricate details that you're going to have to later carve out. So I'm curious, for those of you who work on similar projects, what are your preferred materials and methods for filling in scenes? Do you have any tips or tricks that can make this process a lot easier or give better results? Share your thoughts in the comments. I'm always looking to learn and improve. To successfully remove putty from these detailed areas, it's important to have a good needle file kit. With a quality set, we can ensure that we reach every nook and cranny in preparation for priming. Now we're reaching the exciting part, starting to apply primer in preparation for painting. This is where your print quality settings really make a difference. Initially, I hoped that the primer would conceal the layer lines from the low quality print settings that I used. Although it did help somewhat, I later realized that investing extra time to print at a higher quality setting would significantly reduce my prep work time. So there you have it. Next time, go for high quality print for better results. Now it's time to finally get painting. I'm going to share a few things that I've learned from this first build. And I hope that these tips will help you as well. If possible, it's best to paint the parts before you assemble them. This approach allows for easier access to all of the surfaces and edges. It also makes painting a lot easier. If you find that you have to mix some colors because sometimes you just won't have the colors laying around, make sure that you mix enough paint to do multiple coats because when you come back to paint later, the new mix may not match the first layer and then you're going to have to do a lot of extra painting. And it may take a little extra time, but don't be afraid to use painter's tape for masking. It's a good way to achieve clean, sharp lines, especially when working with multiple colors. In the final step, I'm applying several layers of clear coat. For this project, I chose a glossy finish, although you could also opt for a matte finish or a combination of the two. I'm still on the fence about which finish I prefer although I'm starting to like the matte finish more. Hopefully you've learned from some of my mistakes. If you like this video or you would like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and leave a comment about what you liked and what you didn't like. Since creating this video, I've crafted three more cosplay weapons and with each build, I feel that I've improved. And if you'd like to see those, definitely make sure to like and subscribe.